Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat unusual discovery coming from approximately 12,000 light years away from us. A discovery of what seems to be a star officially confirmed to have swallowed one of its planets, but in a somewhat bizarre and unexpected way. And specifically confirming that planets being eaten by stars is definitely something that's really common, but also providing a very important resolution. A resolution in regards to some of the most common types of planets we've discovered so far that don't seem to exist in the solar system. And so let's talk about this recent study and the observations from the James Webb. But first let's start with a study from approximately 5 years back. And here it was in regards to this. ZTF SLRN 2020, an unusual and somewhat bright emission, suddenly detected 12,000 light years away from us in the year 2020 as the name implies. This was part of ZTF or the Zwicky Transient Facility, which is a kind of an automated system named after the Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky that observes visible and the infrared wavelengths in order to detect transients or sudden bursts of light somewhere out there in the universe. And this actually can be caused by a lot of things, obviously nova and supernova, but also even things like comets and asteroids suddenly erupting as they approach the sun. And while in 2020 it discovered a very bizarre subluminous red nova that at first did not make much sense. You can actually see the before and after picture right here. And this outburst lasted for at least 6 months. But it was not bright enough to be a nova or a supernova, so it had to be something else. There were also no x-ray or gamma ray emissions, so whatever this was it was probably caused by an entirely different phenomenon. And while eventually additional observations revealed that this is most likely a star swallowing a planet. And essentially it was proposed to be this. This star that was probably somewhat similar to our sun became a red giant and have become so large that it basically swallowed one of its gas giant planets. With all of this lasting for approximately 6 months. And this conclusion was reached after analyzing pretty much every wavelength and discovering that there were indeed signs of planetary leftovers with the overall change of brightness predicted by various models as well. And surprisingly this was potentially the third time such an unusual event was witnessed. But this one provided the most data and was practically seen in real time. And so here back in 2020 scientists believed that they found evidence for a star in its final stages of life engulfing a planet just as predicted by various models. But now after 5 years and additional observations with the James Webb the story seems to have changed a little bit. Because here additional infrared observations revealed something a bit more unusual. Now first of all because this was such an unusual event, scientists really wanted to take a look at it with the James Webb just because this was so bizarre. And they actually did receive guaranteed time on the telescope, specifically with a program that's meant to observe different anomalies. And so some of the first infrared observations were made approximately 830 days after the optical emissions and the swallowing of the planet. And almost right away researchers realized that there was actually a bit of a mistake initially. Turns out this was not a red giant at all. As reported in this study by Ryan Lau and his team, in mid-infrared and near-infrared observations, this star was actually your typical K-type star, also known as the orange dwarf. Which basically implied that this star can technically survive for up to 70 billion years and it was definitely not anywhere close to becoming a red giant. Now a star like our sun is expected to become a red giant after maybe 9 to 10 billion years. But this type of a star that's about 70% the mass of the sun can easily survive up to 10 times longer. And so since the star discovered here was much smaller, more dim and even much cooler, it was definitively shown to be a main sequence star not even close to being a red giant. And actually this star seemed to be pretty young, full of energy, with billions and billions of years of hydrogen left to burn. Which of course meant that this type of a scenario was completely out of the question. But the signs of a planet being swallowed were still there. As a matter of fact planetary collision or planetary engulfment was still the best explanation. So obviously the next question was alright so what actually happened then? And well the best explanation is of course the alternative type of a collision. The collision when the planet gets super close to the star and essentially because of the interaction with the outer shell of the star starts to slowly lose its orbit, eventually coming closer and closer to the star and then in a very short period of time evaporates with the rest of the planet absorbed by the star itself. 
And in the past, we've actually discussed quite a few planets, specifically the so-called hot Jupiters, that essentially orbit the star so close that they're practically touching the edge already. In many cases, these planets produce really large tails, as a lot of their atmosphere evaporates. But naturally, we've never seen the end product, or the actual process of the star eating the planet and finally absorbing it into itself. And that's despite the fact that hot Jupiters technically represent some of the most common planets discovered so far. And so far, scientists have also seen pretty much every major stage. Even the stage involving these massive tails, we discussed one of these not so long ago, when a humongous tail of helium was discovered in a star system nearby, and a lot of other objects evaporating as they orbit the star. But there was always a question of, okay, so what happens after though? Does the planet just evaporate, potentially becoming some kind of a rocky core? Does it evaporate completely, leaving nothing behind? Or does something collide with the star as well? And it looks like we finally have that answer. Because right now, the best explanation is that this hot Jupiter slowly evaporated, losing its orbit over time, with the orbit decaying even more over several million years. And this was basically the result of the planet smacking into the outer layers of the star, which would reduce its velocity over time, dropping its orbit. And so after millions of years of the interaction with the star's atmosphere, it eventually left a mark on the surface of the star, leaving behind a lot of gas around the star, but then finally collided with the star, disappearing inside of it, causing the star to poof up just a little bit and increase in brightness. Something that potentially lasted for approximately six months which is what we basically see right here, with the addition observations using near-infrared frequencies, additionally revealing several types of gas clouds and even certain molecules that were sort of unexpected. For example, first there was a presence of a relatively warm circumstellar dust that seemed to be about 720 Kelvin and was forming a kind of a ring around the star, but also the presence of what seemed to be a kind of a poofed up cloud around the star with a much colder and much more massive dust that was about 300 Kelvin in temperature. So basically here we had both the accretion disk from the final collision and a kind of a poofed up ejecta, possibly the result of some kind of a final event that released all of this gas around the star, with the overall process described in this image. So basically here we have a kind of an inspiraling planet, most likely a gas giant, that eventually got absorbed by the star. But intriguingly, this hot molecular gas around the star seemed to contain things like carbon monoxide and phosphine. And this carbon monoxide seemed to actually resemble something we usually find around extremely young stars and protoplanetary disks, which potentially suggests that all of this gas might now start forming something else once it cools down. But the colder gas that seems to be present around the star, that's actually very likely coming from the star itself. And that's because as the planet interacted with the outer shell of the star, a lot of this gas started to escape the star, expanded, cooled off, and eventually formed this much colder gas, still present even after five years. Although it's quite likely that this is just an ejecta that's going to return back into the star with time, possibly changing some of its spectra once again. But right now, only future observations will tell us what's going to happen to the star in the future. For example, one big question here would be, what's going to happen to this ring? Is it actually going to coalesce into something else, like for example, a smaller object? Or will it also disperse over time, returning back into the star, or possibly get blasted away into the outer star system? In a way, this is still a super exciting discovery, and essentially makes this the first ever confirmed planetary engulfment that was seen in real time. Engulfment not related to the star's age, and the engulfment that shows us what happens to hot Jupiters right at the end. With the next really big question to answer being, okay, so did this ever happen in the solar system? And if so, how can we actually find out? Because one big mystery about the solar system is that we don't really have hot Jupiters or mini Neptunes. And the question is, why not? These are extremely common exoplanets, and they've been discovered around most star systems out there. And so it's quite possible that back in the days, billions of years ago, maybe something very similar happened to our sun. And if so, what exactly happened to the ring? And so once there are some additional discoveries or some additional confirmations, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.